Today we're going to be talking about the names of God. Names of God. Uh, this is a doctrine from theology proper. If you recall, we're going through our theological studies, a.k.a. beginner's discipleship. And in our theological, theological studies, there are many branches. Bibliology, study of the Bible. Ecclesiology, study of the church. Eschatology, the study of end times. And here is theology, study of God, or otherwise known as theology proper. So, as we're studying God, we're going to study his names here. When we study his names, we're also going to study his trinity. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We can start, start it that way as the foundation. So, the Father has a list of names. The Son has a list of names. And then later on, we're going to get into the Spirit. He has a list of names as well. Let's talk about the names of God. Uh, man, you can make a sermon out of this, the names of God. It's a huge blessing. If you want a camp meeting sermon, preach on the names of God. That's something really good. We're going to look at several passages in the Word of God as we discuss His names. His name, man, it's just, as one hymn goes, His name is wonderful. First of all, let's explain it this way according to Alvin Douglas's book. <clears throat> His book, God's Answers to Man's Questions. He has a lesson here, Names, Fatherhood, and Silence of God. He says here under the names of God, the names of God are found in three forms. Primary, compound with El, compound with Jehovah. Primary meaning one word only. One word only. So, for example, his name is Wonderful. So, we got primary here. One word. Lord. That's another one. Father, that's another one. When we discuss compound with L. For some of you who don't know, why is L a big deal? L, it uh, connects, L connects to his deity, what the Hebrew uses for his name L. Compound with L is Almighty God, Most High God, Everlasting God. So you'll notice right here that when they say God or they'll mention about L, they use other titles along with it. Almighty God. See, that's a compound then. That's not one word. Most High God. That's a compound, not, a pro not one word. Everlasting God. That's a compound. Not one word. Okay, did that make any sense? Okay, just making sure. Now let's go with compound with Jehovah. Compound with Jehovah. So a disgraceful thing that you don't want to compound with Jehovah is Jehovah's Witnesses. Never do that, please, all right? That's just very offensive to God. You get Lord God the everlasting God, etc. Now notice this is very similar with L, the compound. And the reason why is this. The reason why is when you look at the Hebrew word for Lord, it is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now how many of you have noticed that in your Old Testament? If you notice that in your Old Testament, the compound Lord when you transliterate it from Hebrew to English, it is actually Jehovah, Jehovah. Now, I'm not going to get into Yahweh and all that kind of stuff. That's a whole different study. I'm already infamous online for that. There are people who post hours of videos critiquing me on saying Yahweh, but I could care less. I don't care. We're talking about an English word here. So we're trying to go to English. And by the way, concerning Hebrew, that's a whole nother 
story. It's spurious, that uh, transliterated word Yahweh. Anyways, Jehovah is the right word when we're getting closest to the transliteration from Hebrew to English. <clears throat> so we see three, three forms of the names of God. They are primary, one word, then compound words with L, and compound words with Jehovah. Now let's cover all these titles, and these are Hebrew names for God the Father. So let's cover the Hebrew parts. This is a blessing. Okay. So we're going to cover a lot from the names of our God. The Hebrew side is as follows. One is, which is pretty obvious, is Elohim. Elohim. Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. What you're going to notice is that it can translate to the one who is mighty or the Lord who creates. The one who is mighty, the Lord who creates. Go to Genesis chapter 2. And we'll read verse 4. Now, this is in English, but if you go from the Hebrew word, it will use that word Elohim. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. You'll notice right here it is synonymous with the Lord who creates. Another one is Genesis chapter 14, verse 22. Genesis chapter 14, verse 22. Another Hebrew word is El Elyon. El Elyon. And that means one who is supreme. The one who is supreme. Or the Lord who owns. The Lord who owns. Genesis chapter 14, verse 22. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God the possessor of heaven and earth. And you'll find that out in the Hebrew. This is a English wording, so it's just giving you the English wordings for that. Uh, the other one is Genesis chapter 15, verse 2. Genesis chapter 15, verse 2. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? What you're going to find out from Lord God is Adonai. Adonai. And that is the one who is ruling. The one who is ruling. The fourth one is El Olam. Uh, El Olam. That's Genesis chapter 21, verse 33. Genesis chapter 21, verse 33. Meaning the one who is mysterious. The one who is mysterious. Oh, don't you know that about your father, right? <laughs> Amen. Don't you know that about your father? Genesis chapter 21 and verse 33. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And what you're going to find out from Hebrew, it's Elolam. It also means the Lord who reveals. The Lord who reveals. Not only is he mysterious, he reveals things. That's who God is. All right, Genesis 22, 14. Genesis 22, 14. Here's one that you've heard quite often is Jaira. Jaira. Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. And it actually said it out for you. It actually worded it out. That means the one who redeems. The one who redeems. Or otherwise known as the Lord who provides. The Lord who provides. Verse 14. <coughs> and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jaira. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Let's go to Exodus 15. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. Rafi, Rafi. In other words, the one who heals. The one who heals. Do you see how many names he has? How many names does Allah have? And that ain't even a name. <laughs> Our God has so many names. 
uh, the world's largest religion, their God, doesn't even have a name. How about that? <laughs> you know what? Uh, you're even better than Allah because you got a name. <laughs> Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Oh, I'm sorry. I just blasphemed their God. Forgive me. Okay. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. The Bible says, And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and we'll do that which is right in his sight. You'll notice right here the Lord thy God, and then it words it as Rafi. And you'll find out it means the one who heals, because the last part says, For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Okay, go to Exodus 17, 15. Exodus 17, 15. Nisi. Nisi. The Bible says, And Moses built an altar. And called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. And that's something. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. And there's just so much more about our God. And that means the one who fights for us. The one who fights for us. The Lord, our banner. It also means the Lord, our banner. The next one is Yakadia. Yakadia. Exodus 31, Exodus chapter 31. Then we'll look at verse 13, Exodus 31, 13. Meaning the one who is sanctification. The one who is sanctification. Man, what a blessing. He separated you from sin and put you into holiness. That's his name. That is his name. Exodus chapter 31, and then uh, we'll look at verse 13. Yekadia, the one who is sanctification. Also the Lord who sanctified. The Bible says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. And then in Hebrew you'll find out Yekadiah. Let's go to Judges 6, 24. Judges 6, 24. Common Hebrew word that many of you have Known, Shalom, Shalom, Judges 6, 24. The one who gives peace, the one who gives peace, that's my God, Amen. that's my God. Let's go to Judges chapter 6, verse 24. It also can mean the Lord, our banner. So it can mean the same word, the Lord, our banner. <clears throat> then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet an Afra of the Abiezrites. Man, what a name. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, and Jehovah Jireh. Man, what a name. What a name, our God. Ain't that something? 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. What a holy name that he took it very seriously that you shouldn't take his name in vain. Very precious name. For Samuel chapter 1, and then we'll look at verse 3. Sabaoth, Sabaoth. Some of you may have heard that word before. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 3. And that means the one who is possessing. The one who is possessing. It can also mean the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Sabaoth. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 3 reads, And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. So you notice right here, Lord of hosts. So that's where you get the word Sabaoth. Let's go to Jeremiah 23, 6. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 6. Zitkenu. Zitkenu. I don't know about you, but when I say these words, it just kind of gives me goosebumps. I don't know. What, when you hear these words that relate to the name of our God, it's something very powerful there, something very sacred. That's our God. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6. Zitkenu. And uh, that means the one who is justifying the Lord our righteousness. In his days Judah shall be saved. Verse 6. 
and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. That's where you get Zitkenu and then Jehovah, Lord. So Jehovah Zitkenu. What is his name? Jehovah Jireh. What is his name? Jehovah Nitsi. What is his name? Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Zitkenu. Jehovah Man. It goes on and on. What a name. Ezekiel 48.35. Ezekiel 48.35. Shema. Shema. The one who is present. The one who is present, which, mean, which is also the Lord at hand. The Lord at hand. Ezekiel chapter 48. And we'll read verse 35. <clears throat> the one who is present, otherwise known as the Lord at hand. So if there's one thing you know about God, he's always there. He's always there. I mean, that's his name. If, he, if he's not there for you, then he loses his identity because that's his name. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. So you see Jehovah, the Lord, and then Shema is there. So Je his name is Jehovah Shema. And praise the Lord. Psalm 717. Psalm chapter 7 and verse 17. Elyon. Elyon. If I'm pronouncing that right. All right. What is his name? Elion. And that means the one who is blessing. The one who is blessing. The Lord who blesses. Psalm chapter 7. And we will read verse 17. <clears throat> I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Amen. Why? Because he's the one that keeps blessing us. All right, Psalm 23, 1, the famous passage, Psalm 23, 1. Roy, for some of you who didn't know that in Hebrew, Roy. When we say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord who cares, the one who is caring, the Lord our shepherd, it's Roy right here, Roy. And you know that passage, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, Psalm 23, 1. All right, that is our God. Let's uh, continue on with the names of the Father. I have a book here called uh, Bible Doctrines for Today by uh, Abeka Academy. And they covered some names here, which is pretty good, for God the Father. Now, you notice this is all God the Father. We're gonna, we have not gotten to the Son, and we have not gotten to the Spirit yet. He has many names. He has many names. Think about any other uh, religion who has that many names. Probably the closest you can think of is uh, Hindu gods and goddesses. They have many names, but you notice they're all different persons. You notice that they're all different gods. They're not the one and the same god. But our God is one God and has many names. Many names. That shows his superiority above any Hindu God out there. Some of them will say, well, your God is weaker because I have a million gods and you only have one. So my God is stronger than yours. No, that just shows how weak your God is. Because if you have to have a million different gods with a million different names, how much more superior is my one God with so many names? That just shows his superiority with one God and many names. But if you have many names attributed to many different gods, it shows the weakness of your God. We're going to cover the name of the Father as usual. And one is El Shaddai. 
El Shaddai. And El Shaddai means the all-sufficient one. The all-sufficient one. We're also going to cover other names. Now, these are names that are found in the New Testament. So now, we're going to concentrate on the aspects of the New Testament here. Theos, Theos, and that translates to God simply. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 28 is one example here. I don't think we can have time to go through all these verses. He has so many names. If I say, if I tell you my name, we finish it in five seconds. But if I talk about the name of my God, it'll go over an hour long. How great is my God, amen? John chapter 20, we'll look at verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. So that's where you get the Greek word theos. But you'll notice also over there, kurios, my Lord, right there. So there is kurios in New Testament. Then you'll see pater or pater. And that is father. The Heavenly Father in the New Testament. Then you got the other one. Uh, that, that one is John chapter 1 verse 2. So we, we won't have time to turn over there, but you can go over there if you're fast enough. But John chapter 1 verse 2, you'll see that in... Uh, uh, John chapter 1 verse 12, excuse me. John chapter 1 verse 12. And Luke chapter 11 verse 2. That's where I switched it. Luke chapter 11 verse 2. So there are two of them. Luke 11 2. And John 1, 12. You'll notice that God is given the title as Father, and He takes care of His children. Last one uh, we want to cover in the New Testament is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And that means God with us. God with us. That's uh, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. <clears throat> What a God. What a God. It's because of everything that he's done for us. He is worthy of all these names. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now we're going to uh, cover the names of Jesus Christ. We're going to be covering the names of God the Son. Uh, God is so superior that it's not just uh, one person in, in the Godhead, but two persons with many different names. Uh, what a great and mighty God we serve. As a matter of fact, for some of you who don't know, Elohim is evidence of the Trinity itself. A lot of Jews don't realize that, but it's a plural form attributed to one God. That's what Elohim is attributed to. Elohim is a plural form, but it is attributed to one God. It truly shows Trinity then. One God, plural persons. Now we're going to cover the names of the Son of God. The first one is Christ. The first one is Christ. Man, see all these names? That's something, man. <laughs> Uh, that will be John chapter 1, verse 41. John chapter 1, verse 41. We won't turn there for time's sake. But he is anointed. Christ means uh, anointed one. He's also called son of God. Son of God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. 
You notice how the names of our God just obliterates everything from different religions. You notice that? They teach that Allah had no son, but the title of God himself obliterates that doctrine. You'll notice that Jews, they do not believe in a trinity, but the name of their God, Elohim, just obliterates their Jewish doctrine. The very name of God itself, you might be surprised how much doctrine there is in there and how much it clears away the heresies and the false religions out there. That's something, right? Man, just his name, his very name. Uh, the third one is Son of Man. Son of Man. And that's John chapter 5, verse 26 through 27. John chapter 5, verse 26 through 27. Ain't that a name? Look at this name here. That should not be there. With a high and mighty God. But he put that on him with pride. He put that on him as an honor. Because he took on the role of humility. And he wants the world to know that. He wants the world to know that he lived his life as a humble servant before. Uh, I'll cover that in today's preaching later on. But it shows the nature of our God. It shows the nature of our God. The fourth one, the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this is the name of Jesus Christ. Get this. You know what Jesus Christ's name is? Now, don't get a heart attack. Don't get a heart attack now. Go to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1. If you don't believe me, the Father called his son by this title. So, get this, Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah called his son this title if you, Jehovah's Witnesses, refuse to call him by that title. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse, uh, verse 8. Excuse me, verse 8. But unto the Son, he saith, see, this is the Father speaking to the Son. Okay. Thy throne, what? O God. o God, is forever and ever. That's his name. Amen. And Christ's name is also Lord. Not just the Father, but Jesus Christ too. Proving his deity. Proving his oneness with God. The Father. And that's Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Which we won't have time to turn to. And this name, which has become the most popular searched uh, name, and it's a very precious name. It's amazing that he would take on this name. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Jesus. Jesus. The most famous figure throughout all of history, hands down. Whether you believe he is God or not, history cannot deny this is the most famous man in all of history. That name, that one name, Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. What a name. What a name. It is the Greek translation of the Hebrew name Joshua. It also means Savior or salvation. Now, this name is a very precious name to God. It shows how much salvation means that much to our God. It's at the name of what? Saving someone's soul. That name that every knee should bow and confess. Salvation. Salvation. That's something, right? That's a name that he adorns. Now, the no-brainer, which we looked at before, it's not just the Father, but obviously the Son, and that is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And uh, we saw that passage. It will be, again, it will be Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The other name that Jesus takes upon, the Son takes upon, is Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Why would he do that? Because 
to show his humanity. Humanity. That's what the son does. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. They'll mention about in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I like this one. 1 Timothy 2.5. 1 Timothy 2.5. The man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. You know what Pilate called him? Behold, the man. What a man. He was a man's man. He ain't a sissy like all these pictures depict him. Like churches nowadays depict him. He was truly a man. You know what it takes guts? You know what it takes a man to do? It takes a man to be able to fearlessly take on the world's most, uh, most horrible torture and to carry the weight and the responsibility of billions of all the world upon his shoulder. Their sins, their accountability. No president, no great leader ever had that much weight on his shoulders except Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a man right there. Yeah. That's a man. Nothing would make the devil more happy than to, to pick Jesus as a sissy nowadays, right. as a weakling. Don't be a part of that kind of uh, Christianity, that kind of movement. Amen, My Jesus ain't like that. All right, now, here's the fun part. You ever heard these preachers try to give the names of God in alphabetical order? You ever notice that? And then it gets people all stirred up and pumped up, and they go, yeah. <laughs> um, you remember evangelist Mark Wheeler? He was trying to go by alphabetical order about the names of God, and that just pumped you up. So let's go through the names of the Lord alphabetically then, shall we? A through Z, the names of the Lord alphabetically. Now, I'm going to say the verses briefly. So you're going to have... Uh, Actually, we do have time, so why don't we go uh, one by one as much as we can. Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. That's Revelation 1.8. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Do you see how many names he has? He can cover A through Z. <laughs> That's something. Amen. Allah couldn't even pass the first letter of the alphabet. <laughs> Go to Revelation chapter 1, and then we'll look at verse 8. The Bible says, I am Alpha and Omega. Amen. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. That's something. Let's go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 15. Matthew chapter 9, verse 15. He's known as the bridegroom. The bridegroom. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 15, the word of God reads, And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn <coughs> as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. Yeah, he's been taken away from us, but he's coming back. Amen. I'm waiting for my bridegroom. All right, 1 Peter 2, 6. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the chief cornerstone. You see all these elites, globalists, and uh, satanic stuff where they try to get on the top of the pyramid and the all-seeing eye? You know what that is? That's the devil trying to take one of the names of God. But that's God's name, the chief cornerstone. That's who he is, not the devil. 1 Peter chapter 2, and then verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, Elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Now, I like this one. Haggai 2.7. Haggai 2.7. You know what his name is? Desire of nations. Desire of nations. I like that. 
The other one that we'll cover is Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Matthew chapter 1 and verse uh, 23. And then that's Emmanuel. That's Emmanuel. And we've already covered that. That means God with us. All righty. And that's Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, which we saw before. The other one is faithful and true. Faithful and true. And that'll be in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. Revelation chapter 19. And that will be in verse 11. All right, we'll turn over there real quickly. <clears throat> if there's one thing you know about your God, he will always be faithful and true to you. And uh, because of that, he deserves such a title. Revelation 19, verse 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Uh, governor is his other name. Go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. His other name is Governor. We do know that one day the governor will take what rightfully belongs to him. And all the governors of this world will bow the knee before him. He'll bring in the perfect kingdom. Matthew 2 verse 6, And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a, notice capital, governor, that shall rule my people Israel. So that is his name. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 10. His other name is High Priest. His other name is High Priest. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible says, Called of God, notice, an High Priest. So he's called. Jesus is called from God, High Priest. After the order of Melchizedek. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59. And we'll look verse 16. Verse 16. He's also called intercessor. Intercessor. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 16. So he will intercede on your behalf and mine whenever we mess up in our lives. He is the in-between party and takes care of it. Satisfies the wrath of the Father and brings us closer to God. Because that's his name. Isaiah 59 verse 16. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. And his righteousness, it sustained him. Well, we know that Jesus Christ became that intercessor. John chapter 19 and verse 19. John chapter 19 and verse 19. Now, we covered this, but we're going from A through Z. So, Jesus. And then you can put Jesus of Nazareth if you want. John 19, 19. John chapter 19 and verse 19 reads, And Pilate wrote a title and put on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Let's go to Revelation 19, 16. Revelation 19, 16. He's also called King of Kings. His name is also called King of Kings. Now, I don't know if you're writing notes, but... Wouldn't this kind of be cool if you kind of have like a little card and then you put all the names of God in alphabetical order and then the back of your card, you got the names of the Father, Son, and Spirit with the Bible verses next to it? So take advantage of that right now. Don't waste it. 
All right. His uh, name is King of Kings, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 16. The Bible says right here, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name. See that? That's his name. Name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Verse 6 and 8. Verse 6 and 8. He's also known as the Lamb. He's also known as the Lamb. Revelation chapter 5 and then verse 6, the Bible says, And I beheld, and lo, <coughs> in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a Lamb. Now notice this Lamb is capitalized, so it shows his name. As it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth, and then verse 8, the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, capitalized again, showing his name. Revelation 22, 16. Revelation 22, 16. He is known as the Morning Star. The Morning Star. That's the name of Jesus Christ. Now, for some of you who don't know, here's a fun fact, okay? For some of you who don't know, if you have an NIV... If you have a NASV, and if you have the English Standard Version, ESV, look up Isaiah 14, 12, and notice who the day star is, the morning star is. It's not Jesus. It's Lucifer. Fun fact. Hey. Okay. I, I, I want to put a little bit of humor in that one. All right, so let's go to Revelation 22, 16. Some of you are probably shocked. <laughs> it wasn't funny. Some of you are shocked and going, what, seriously? Well, do your homework assignment. Go home. So you see what Satan's trying to do? He wants to take Jesus' name and titles as much as he can so he can attribute it to himself. Revelation chapter 22, and then uh, we'll look at verse 16. The Bible says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 23. Matthew 2, verse 23. Now this is very humbling about the name of our God. In Matthew chapter 2, and verse 23. You know what he will be called, which is something? Very simple. A small town, middle of nowhere. But simply, he will be called Nazarene. Nazarene. Man. He put that for his name. Matthew chapter 2, and then we'll look at verse 23. The Bible says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. All right, uh, John 3, 16, the famous verse. John 3, 16. You know what he's also called? Only begotten son. Only begotten son and from the famous verse John 3 16 uh, most of you know that verse for God so loved the world that he gave <coughs> his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. He's also known as the Prince. He's also known as the Prince. Acts chapter 5, and then verse 31. The Bible says, <clears throat> Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a Prince and a Savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So now we come to P, Prince. Okay, we're going to uh, skip some letters of the alphabet right over here, and we're going to get on to the more common ones. If some of you can find the other alphabetical letters that will match this title, that'll be really cool. 
uh, especially the letter Z, right? <laughs> or Y. But anyways, let's uh, skip down uh, to the more common ones. So after P is R, so resurrection. Resurrection. That's John eleven twenty five. John eleven twenty five. Now, Jesus Christ addressed himself as, I am the resurrection and the life. So we do know that. John chapter 11, verse 35, notice what he addressed to uh, Martha. He is the resurrection and the life. Uh, John chapter uh, 11, and then verse 25. Did I say 35? Sorry, 25. Yeah, 25. Uh, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 1 Peter 2, the next letter is S. 1 Peter chapter 2, and then we'll look at verse 25. 1 Peter 2, verse 25. He is the great shepherd, amen? So he is the shepherd. What Christians need to do to have a better appreciation of their God is to look at his names. Not just his promises. Understand this. Don't just only count and look at the promises of God in the book. Look at his name. When you look at his name, you'll realize who he is and what he provides and what he can bless you with. Did that make any sense? So we always talk about the song, Count Your Many Blessings, and that helps us to take away the doom and the gloom. But more so than his blessings, you got to look at his person, who he really is. That's where the blessings come from. So why not look at his name? And when you examine his names, you realize he will provide these blessings to you if you look at the blessings behind his names. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. For ye were as sheep going astray, but now are returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Okay, skipping down, here we go. Uh, just write them down. We're going to, uh, the time has flown going through the alphabet. So here we go. Truth. He is truth. If you're a truther, then you go to Jesus Christ. That's John chapter 14, verse 6. A lot of you who are searching for truth eventually... Hit the truth, didn't you? You always hit Jesus Christ at the end. There's no way around that as you're searching for truth. A lot of you are witnesses of that here. Other uh, one is the vine. He is the true vine. Uh, John 15, 1 through 16. John 15, 1 through 16. And then word. He is the word of life. And that is John chapter 1 and verse 1. All right. Well... Z, yeah, I know. Someone give me Y and Z, please. <laughs> Someone give me Y and Z, please. I need that one. I don't think there's even a Hebrew word for Z. <laughs> so that ain't going to work out. All right. Now, we're going to cover the Holy Spirit. We're going to cover the names of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who is operating currently within us. If we want to have peace with God as we keep serving him in the Holy Spirit, we have to uh, keep thinking about the name of the Holy Spirit. If we think about his name, then we'll know his job currently working within us. That will help you a lot to be filled with the Spirit. That will help you a lot more to yield to the Spirit. And that will help you a lot more to take comfort and to appreciate the Holy Spirit more. So let's think about the names of God. I don't know if that's what you got out of today's lesson. It's not just a whole bunch of names you have to realize. The point of today's lesson is to think about each meaning behind each name that attributed to our God who he really is and what he can provide for you, what he does for you. All right, let's cover the names of the Holy Spirit here. 
And uh, I'm going to be reading from Albin Douglas's book, God Answers to Man's Question. So the names of the Holy Spirit, now the common one is the Holy Spirit, so we'll ignore that part. But the other one is, he's called the Spirit, John chapter 3, verse 6. You'll notice that quite often, Spirit, that's John chapter 3, verse 6. The other one is Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord, that will be attributed to the Holy Spirit. And that is Isaiah 11, 2. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. The third one is Spirit of Jehovah. Spirit of Jehovah. And that's Isaiah 61, 1. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. He's also known as the Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the Living God. If there's one thing you notice about the Spirit, it shouldn't be dead, right? From all these names you saw so far. So that's 2 Corinthians 3.3. 3. 2 Corinthians 3.3. 3. So uh, you've got to ask yourselves this. Is, if you're really uh, living by the Holy Spirit, then is your Christian life dead? If your Christian life is dead, I wonder if you have any Holy Spirit in you. Or if you're yielding to the living Spirit, if you are saved, and if you have the Holy Spirit. See, that's very important to think about. That is his name. That is his nature. So if you're not living, there's something wrong there, right? The Spirit of Christ. Spirit of Christ. Again, it shows oneness here of Spirit, Son, and Father. There's no doubt a trinity going on. Spirit of Christ. And that is uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. He's also known as Spirit of... Uh, let's see right here. I think Spirit of Burning. Spirit of Burning. So that's Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 4. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4. I'm not sure about that one, but uh, I'll just write it in case, because I want to cover as many names as possible. Uh, the other one is the spirit uh, of his son. Spirit of his son. And that is Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. Galatians chapter 4. And verse 6. Uh, the eighth one is spirit of holiness. Spirit of holiness. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Twelfth is this, uh, the ninth one, which is a wonderful, uh, wonderful name. Holy Spirit of promise. Holy Spirit of promise. So he has to keep his word in you. If the Holy Spirit is operating in you and God gave you a promise, those two things are intertwined and make up his name and he has to fulfill it. So if you don't see any of that fulfilling in your life, then uh, God's not real. The Holy Spirit's not real and he don't meet up to his name or to his promises. And that's Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13. Now, you notice that these names are very synonymous with the Father and Son, right? So it shows right here that they're one. They're very much one. Spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. That's John chapter 14 and verse 17. Spirit of truth. John chapter 14 and then uh, verse 17. Uh, spirit of life. Spirit of life. That's Romans 8, 2. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. He's also known as Spirit of Wisdom and Understanding. Spirit of Wisdom and Understanding. Now, I don't know if you're taking advantage of this, but if you want understanding, if you want wisdom in your life, then you got the Holy Spirit in you. So that's why you got to yield to it. That's why you got to pray for it. I mean, if you're dead, then you need life in you, then you got the Holy Spirit in you. Yield to it. Pray for it. Thirteen, uh, spirit of grace. 
Spirit of grace. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. If your Christianity is uh, filled up with meanness, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's got to have grace in there. Now, does that mean that you can never be mean? No, of course not. I mean, one, you got to be mean here and there. Of course, you have to do that. But if a person cannot honestly call you gracious, I wonder what, holy, what spirit you got in you. Because the Holy Spirit is attributed to grace. Spirit of glory. Spirit of glory. 1 Peter 4.14. 1 Peter 4.14. Eternal spirit. Eternal spirit. Let's see right here. Eternal, oops, excuse me. Okay, eternal spirit. That will be Hebrews 9, 14. Hebrews 9, 14. The common one that you and I know, the comforter. The comforter. That's one of my favorite names from the Holy Spirit. That's John chapter 14, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. And last but not least, oil of gladness. Oil of gladness. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 9. That was a lot, right? Only on his name. Only on his name. This will be a nice card to hang on your refrigerator door or, you know, put inside your Bible or something. But when you look at all this, these are all the names. <laughs> and there is so much more, right? Amen. That's our God. Father, I pray that today's teaching was a blessing to the hearers and that... Uh, We'll take reverence of your name. Lord, the world has blasphemed it. Lord, the, the people have belittled your name. They don't think much of you. But what a name, Father. You're the greatest of all other kings and gods and persons and beings out there. You are you. Help us to appreciate who you are. And all these names make up who you are. It's not just a title or a name. It's really who you are. That's why we have named you as such. That's why you call yourself by these names. I pray that we'll truly appreciate who you are after today's lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.